Isn't it more expensive though than you guys were thinking? It's a lot more expensive than we were thinking. Flagstaff, I don't know why Flagstaff fits so well. I'm gonna tell you, I don't know. The only thing like against Flagstaff is really the houses are expensive and that it's further away from our kids. So those are definitely cons. everyone it's Katie from without a crystal ball welcome back to my channel it is Friday November 18th 2022 and I hope you are having a wonderful day Fridays are always the hardest for me to get going and so you guys get a voiceover today and I know some of you miss my face when we do these but they are necessary and I have a lot to talk with you about today and it's all about Cody Brown's neighbors at Coyote Pass and the property and what is going on with the Browns. Are they ever going to build? What do the neighbors think? What's the deal? Is anything happening? Well, a neighbor literally reached out to me yesterday, no, two days ago. They have a home in Coyote Pass. They are literally neighbors of this man and they had a lot to say. So before we get into that, can you please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up? If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and make sure you turn your notifications on so you know when new content loads and if I ever go live and make sure to leave some comments. So two days ago, I got an email from a neighbor of Cody Brown and they are they own property inside Coyote Pass. And contrary to popular belief, there are people that live on this property. The Browns are not the only ones that own property in Coyote Pass. And this group of lots are relatively remote. And it's apparently not necessarily a place where people actually live full time throughout the years. So here's some details. So basically, the neighbor reaches out to me and they're like, oh, hey, uh, so my friend or my sister watches your videos and they let me know that maybe I should contact you and I'd love to share any information I can. And first and foremost, I just want to say the neighbor wasn't there to like spread dirt about the Browns. There was no like animosity in regards to Cody. Like they basically said that Cody, they've always had like super cordial interactions with Cody uh, in regards to like their dealings, although the dealings are primarily about projects that they have to do on Coyote Pass. But beyond that, they haven't had a lot of interactions and they've never met any of the wives apparently. So Cody is the only person that will talk to anyone when it comes to anything to do with anything that needs to be done at the property. Uh, I asked them if they've ever seen Robin out sitting on the bench, and the big answer was no. So apparently Robin's bench might not actually be a thing. I don't know. They did discuss. Uh, I asked them specifically about the RV and when Janelle lived out there, and they said that literally no neighbors had a single problem with Janelle living out there. Uh, she was only out there for a few months, and she was super friendly. She would wave whenever they she would see her neighbors driving past. So Janelle being out on the property in the RV was not anything that was like upsetting to any neighbors and as far as I could tell. So here's kind of the dirt of the situation. So Cody Brown lives in a neighborhood that apparently is where mostly people build vacation homes. And the bulk of the people that live around there are not full-time residents. So Cody, thinking about moving there, he would be not moving around people that are going to be there full-time. He would have neighbors that come and go. And apparently this little neighborhood area is where a lot of Phoenix residents go or Scottsdale residents go to get away from the heat in the summer, uh, maybe catch some snow in the winter. It's a way for them to get away. 
It's a cute little mountain town and most of his neighbors, he said, don't live there full time. Now, in regards to like the infrastructure inside Cody's property, there's been a lot of questions about, you know, what is he gonna have to do? Is there water? Is there electricity? In fact, even this week on the show, they were talking about how the they won't bring or run electric to the property. Uh, unless it's a, if it's a vacant lot. They couldn't specifically answer questions on that, but they did say that the property has a joint well. So there's a deep well that a number of the houses in the area are all siphoning off of. And then you remember that cistern, that huge tank that Cody was burying a couple years ago on the show and, and Solomon j jumped into the, the hole with him. This was a project that was apparently numerous neighbors were like involved in this project and Cody I guess drag his feet like drug his feet and it, it caused the project to take a lot longer than it should have like to the tune of two years when it should have been done in way less time and remember how he was bare he was like putting that cistern in the property and that was like two years ago According to the neighbor, he literally, Cody literally just buried that in October. And it was after a ton of pushback from neighbors to get him to finish the project. And apparently the road that they all share has been left in complete disarray up to the point where the cistern was buried. And that's caused some frustration with some of the neighbors. Now, neighbor disputes over property and, and roads and joint roads is going to happen regardless but there is a deep well and so they don't actually have to haul water in the well has water in it and then the water siphons from the well to the cisterns and then the cisterns are like holding tanks that will refill from the well and then those cisterns then pump water to the homes and they all share the deep well and then they each home has individual cisterns so they don't actually have to like haul water. It's more like the well will bring the water in, goes to the cistern, goes to the houses. So the water situation is almost complete and it's been a nightmare apparently because Cody doesn't like to get things done. So the next question is why haven't they built any houses and what? why does he actually think that he needs to pay off these properties? And the, this part the neighbor thought was really bizarre because most people that build out there, they don't, they use a bank and they get a construction loan and the construction loan will give them like three to four years to build by the time they get the loan. And I explained to the neighbor that Cody has a loan with the seller and they were like dumbfounded because that's not typical. And I also explained that he wanted to reparcel the lots and the neighbor was kind of a little bit surprised by that too because there's apparently a pipeline that's like going through this property, which if he were to subdivide it into the five lots that he wants, one of the lots, the one that has the pond on it, would be basically useless and he would not be able to build much of anything there because you can't build within 60 feet of the pipeline and he also can't build so much so many feet away from the pond and the pond itself is actually not a pond it's a drainage ditch that's the neighbor said is empty 95 percent of the time and when it is full it's generally filled with you know animal droppings and mud so it's not like anything you would want it's not like a, it's not a cute little pond. It's like a, uh, he, the way that the neighbor described it is it's just a, a runoff pond and it's usually not full. <laughs> so not a place to go swimming with your kids and definitely not something that's like going to offer you a ton of scenery. So, uh, that specific lot that he said was going to be his lot where he was going to build would likely never, if, the way that the neighbor described it is they wouldn't be able to build much of anything if any if it would be a small piece of property so the pipeline has easements that are kind of a mess and because of how he wants to subdivide there's not a road at all so cody would also have to build a road or a really long driveway which is apparently expensive so on top of all of that building in flagstaff is ridiculously expensive so this is some tea that i thought you might be interested in so i was asking the neighbor about prices for building and how much it would cost and 
he was telling me that there's a current person that's building and their estimated per square footage that they're building their home for right now is $488 per square foot, which is super expensive. When I built my house, it was well under $200 a square foot. So $488 per square foot doesn't go very far. And if you know Cody, he wants to build a house that's got three or 4,000 square feet. His house that he has with Robin is 4,300 square feet, right? If he were to build an equivalent 4,000 square foot home, say on the property, just one of those homes at 488 would be on just under $2 million. I said $2 million. Yes, I'm not lying. I am not lying. So the neighbor was actually surprised that Cody would want to divide it into five from four because building prices are so expensive. And then if he wants to build these homes that he's had, because all of the homes that they had in Vegas were 4,000 to 5,000 square feet homes. If they're going to do the same here, it would be $2 million per home. And that would be a $4,000, a 4,000 square foot home. It's very expensive to build. So he would need $2 million to build and that very expensive, right? So I asked them like, has Cody done any surveying? Has he done any, you know, property easements, anything to see like about doing any building? And the neighbor said that as far as they know, there's been no permits pulled, which I verified. Um, they haven't gone through the process to actually survey the land. So apparently before you can even get drawn plans for this neighborhood, they actually have to bring in a surveyor and a surveyor has to come in and they actually have to like mark off every single tree. And this is a very heavily wooded area. And so when they built, he said that they had a surveyor come out and it literally took them a whole day to mark off every single tree. And then the trees, once they're marked off, an architect can come in and design something, but every single tree has to be accounted for before they can actually design anything for the property. Once that's done and the, sur the survey is approved through the county, then you can start the process for plans. I asked him about like, okay, so has Cody looked for contractors? And this person said, yes. They had actually been told that Cody had been discussing with contractors that were in the area uh, that were building other homes about the potential of working for him. But the problem was, is that the contractors weren't being offered money, instead were being offered allegedly airtime and publicity on TLC in lieu of money. So like trading airtime, trading uh, time on TLC's show. So basically saying, hey, will you help me pour this slab of cement if I let you appear on the show with me? And unfortunately for Cody, this type of trade was not something that interested the contractors because one, he has five homes to build or four homes or whatever it is that he wants to build. And they didn't think it would be worth it. And it also made them allegedly skeptical on whether or not he would have any money to actually pay for the whole home. So the, the contractors were not super interested and they declined to work with Cody. They didn't wanna be on the show, they didn't wanna work for a trade, they wanted to work for money. And with how expensive it is to build out there and how expensive a home these would be at $2 million, I could see a trade at a lower level, you know, at like a, a smaller sized house or a smaller price tag. But when you're talking about homes in the millions of dollars, a lot of contractors are going to be a little bit sketchy on that. So it sounds like coming up with the money is a huge problem for Cody. Uh, it took him two years to do the cistern, uh, and he still has not done anything to pay off the land. Now, in terms of the loans, if he were to get a construction loan, so someone else I had talked to had mentioned like, well, couldn't he get a construction loan to help pay off the lot and get started? Yes. But the neighbor said that current rates on construction loans are super high right now. So they said that the most recent rate that they got for a construction loan for this area was at 8%, which is a lot higher than it was when they moved four years ago when rates were at a historic low. Cody's 
The properties have inflated so much in the past five years since they moved there. You're talking about seeing some properties increasing 100% in five years. And with that, prices have gone through the roof for building. Cody has priced himself out of being able to build. He's not taking any steps to build and the neighbors are starting to wonder if they will ever build. The other thing that they noted was, you know on the sister wives when they're always outside and they're like with those logs and they're stripping the logs? I sent these pictures to the neighbor and I said, do you know what these logs are from? The neighbor said that those plant, those trees were removed when they installed the cistern and that was it. But he did say that if Cody was going to be build a log house, he's not doing it the right way because they actually have to have the wood, the trees professionally removed by a company. And then the company has to dry the wood out, then strip the wood, then prepare it in order to use it to build. So why he's doing what he's doing out at the property makes no sense to the neighbor because that's not how you would prepare wood to build a wood home or a log cabin. There are log cabins in the area and I asked about that log cabin that everyone thinks is Cody's house. That is not Cody's house. That's actually owned by a guy that lives there part time and it is just at the very, it's basically the house that you walk, that you pass while you're driving into Coyote Pass but it is not owned by Cody. But that is an example of a log house and there are log houses that are built in the area. But if Cody were to build a log house, the way that he's stripping the wood is not the way that you should do it. And I said, has he removed more trees than just that? And they said, no. So those logs that they continue, continuously use to make it look like he's working were only removed to place the cistern and that's it. Beyond that, they haven't done anything. So, <laughs> The neighbor's going to be out there in a couple weeks and said they'd take some pictures and let me know if they see Robin sitting on the bench. But thus far, nothing is happening in Flagstaff and neighbors want their road fixed. I'll let you know more as I get details, but tell me what your thoughts are in the comments below. Bye guys.